Hi everybody, it's Andy and welcome again to my office in Los Altos, California. I'm an attorney licensed to practice law in California as well as New York. In today's video, we're going to go over immigration, specifically something called a form instruction. Uh, now, those of you who are perhaps unaware of how immigration works, in the United States, immigration is controlled exclusively by the federal government. Uh, so if you have looked into immigration at all, if you've read immigration-related you know, brochures, paperwork, etc., you probably have seen the acronym USCIS. Uh, that stands for the United States Customs and Immigration Service, and that is the federal branch, or the branch of the federal government, rather, that controls all things immigration. Uh, so the, the reason that's important is because all immigration forms, laws, uh, regulations, rules, etc., are put out by the federal government, which means they are the same regardless of which state you're talking about. Uh, so as a result, even though I'm licensed only in California and New York, this, you know, this video, the information that I'm going to go over in this video, uh, applies to you regardless of where you live in the U.S. You can live in other states, you can live in California, it doesn't matter. Um, actually, come to think of it, uh, this information that I'm about to go over actually applies to you regardless of where you live in the world. Uh, I know some of you actually live outside the United States. Uh, so the basic idea then is that if you have to interact with the U.S. immigration system at all, this video should hopefully apply, uh, you know, and help you out. So um, all of that said, I guess, anybody who has ever I interacted with the U.S. immigration system um, generally will come away with the impression that there are an awful lot of forms to do things. Uh, so, you know, it could be a form to apply for a green card. It could be a form to uh, apply for citizenship. You know, you might be sponsoring your spouse for something. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different forms. Uh, you know, a lot of times the average person probably looks at it and goes, how can I possibly do this correctly? There are so many forms, I'm completely overwhelmed. So um, the, the people who I've met, I guess, the people who I've seen who are actually um, you know, in the process of filling out forms, they generally tend to, uh, I guess, get caught between a rock and a hard place, for lack of a better term. So uh, on the one hand, they are very, very motivated to do the form correctly. You know, they want to be honest, they don't want to be accused of lying or you know, uh, withholding information. They certainly don't want to jeopardize getting a green card. They don't want to jeopardize becoming a U.S. citizen. On the other hand, however, because there is so much writing on, you know, one or two or three forms, uh, it is very easy to become paranoid, I guess, uh, to be, you know, to worry about filling the form out so correctly that you overthink it, that you confuse yourself, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, Lest, you know, any of you think that, you know, I'm kind of over-dramatizing that, the forms, or sorry, the questions rather, the questions that people who are filling out forms can have, um, you know, they could be really easy or they could be pretty difficult. An easy question might be, once I fill out this form, where do I mail it to for processing? Uh, or when I fill this form out, do I have to use black ink or can I use blue instead? When I file this form, what's the fee? How can I pay that fee, etc.? So, um, I think all of us would agree that those questions are easier, but and they are legitimate, uh, but they're fairly um, routine, I guess. They're fairly easy to answer. Like, you know, you, think, you look it up and you go, yes, you can use blue ink. No, you can't. The fee is $500, not $300, and so on and so on. Um, on the other hand, however, um, because you have, um, I guess, such variety in terms of the places and, you know, uh, countries where people come from, you can have hard questions also, like this, for instance. Uh, let's say that you know uh, you were born in country X, and that was say 40 years ago. But some time during your life, you know there was a civil war in your country. There was famine. Um, you know your neighboring country invaded or something. And because of that, the country that you were born in, the country that existed at the time, you know when you were uh, growing up, that country no longer exists. So. Uh, when the immigration forms, I think most immigration forms will do this, when the form asks you, tell me the state, the country, the province, etc., where you were born, what do you put? Do you put the name of the country that existed back then, that no longer exists? Or do you put the name of the country that exists today, which is not actually the country that you were born in? Uh, so hopefully that's a relatively rare situation, like, you know, not a lot of people are kind of stumbling over that question. Uh, but if it is you and you do have to answer that question, you know, you know, I think we can all admit that that's a very, um, you know, kind of important, um, pressing question to, to get correct. So because you have, you know, a lot of motivated people and, you know, not a real good source of information, you know, for these people, 
a lot of bad things can happen. So the thing is, you know, you might have con men, swindlers, etc., who kind of sense that you have a lot of desperate people, you know, anxious for information, and you know, they charge a bunch of money for this information, but the information turns out to be wrong, etc. So um, I guess people who are trying to fill out immigration forms are at risk of being conned. Uh, on the other hand, or simultaneously rather, uh, you know, it is possible that you know you might find inaccurate sources of information. So if you're trying to deal with X, you ask around and you find somebody who dealt with X years and years ago, but it's not something that's really reliable, I guess. So the thing is, maybe it's a friend of a friend who quote knew a guy, you know, a nameless guy, uh, who dealt with this, in, who dealt with the situation and it turned out okay. But you know, you kind of don't want to rely on such a shady source, I guess. Uh, you would much rather prefer something you know more reputable. So, what is the average kind of person supposed to do? And the answer is to rely on a form instruction. Uh, so, a form instruction, for those of you who don't know, basically is a um, set of instructions, a set of commonly asked questions uh, that accompany a particular immigration form. And I want to say almost all immigration forms uh, have instructions. Uh, if you hang out to the very end of this video, I'll show you how to actually get a uh, form instruction. But the basic idea then is that you know this document accompanies a particular immigration form. If you're using the form and you have questions, you read the instruction and hopefully it's something that will answer you know the question that you had, give you the background. So you look at it and go, okay, I understand the form now. This is what I need to put down because that's what the instructions are uh, kind of telling me. So um, instructions are, like I said, you know they're very helpful. Uh, they are free. They're authored by USCIS uh, themselves. And, um, you know, so because of that, you don't have to worry about the, f the information being accurate, being up to date. Uh, USCIS is your source that way. So um, all of that said, I guess, like, you know, I'm really struggling to come up with a reason why you would not, you know, at least consult an immigration form. Like, it's free, it's reliable, it's accurate. Um, you know, there's no real drawback to, consult to consulting it. So. Um, all of that said then, I guess, uh, let's go ahead and uh, go over how to get an immigration, uh, or, sorry, to get a form instruction rather. Uh, it's really easy, uh, you can do it online, it's free, and uh, all you basically need is a PDF uh, reader. So, um, all of that said, let's go ahead and do that uh, right now. Okay everybody, so the way that you actually get a form instruction is super simple. Depending on what Google suggests for you when you type your search terms in, uh, your process may actually get even easier. The way that you begin is you basically just type in the number of the form that you want to get instructions for. So I think early on in the video I mentioned the form N400, the, uh, the application rather, the application for uh, naturalization. So if we stick with that example and we type in the number N400 into Google, uh, in this case, Google actually has uh, suggested, uh, you know, instructions as a search term also. So if we accept the suggestion, the PDF, uh, like basically the first hit, you know, is, is the PDF of the instructions. So if we open that, uh, it opens up, you know, in your PDF reader and, you know, this is basically it. It's the instructions for the application for naturalization, form N400. And in this case, it's 18 pages uh, long, so fairly comprehensive. If we close out of that, I will actually show you the method that I prefer more. Uh, and that basically is to delete the instructions search term and just search for the form number. If you do it that way, uh, the first hit that you generally will get will be the USCIS kind of page for that form. So it's generally going to be USCIS.gov slash and then whatever the form number is. Uh, if you do it that way, this is the page that you get to. And the reason I like this kind of method more is that this page provides you a lot of information in addition to the instructions. So the instructions, like the 18 page thing that we just saw, that's what this is. Uh, a lot of times people will wonder, oh, well, you know, how do I get immigration forms? You know, do I have to be really careful? If, if I screw up this form, if I make a mistake, where can I get another copy? And the answer to that question is basically right there. Uh, you can download, um, I, think, I, think I'm, I think I'm correct in saying that you can download all immigration forms as PDFs. Uh, so that's why I like this method better. Uh, and then in addition to uh, the form itself and the instructions, if for, you know, for whatever reason a particular form has other helpful documents, uh, in this case the N400 does, those documents will be listed um, in additional bullets here also. So. Um, in addition to that, you have collapsible menus, I guess, right here. 
that will tell you about, um, I guess, frequently asked types of questions like number of pages, where to send the form, you know, uh, based on where you live, et cetera. And uh, kind of earlier I mentioned the filing fee question. So each form on the USCIS website will have a section like this. Uh, in this case, it is $640 uh, for the N-400. Um, this same type of format, like a web, uh, a web page with the blank copy of the form, the instructions, et cetera, that applies to other forms also. So if you wanted to um, you know, apply for a green card, use the 485 form. The blank 485 is right there. The instructions for the form are right there. The instructions for supplements are below it. Um, if you wanted to you know, sponsor a relative, for example, the form 130, uh, the blank form is right there. The instructions are right there. So um, this is the method that I like more because if you get to this page, or I guess the USCIS version of this page for whatever form you're interested in, there will be a lot of additional information um, on this page also, uh, other than just the instructions. So um, hopefully all of that made sense. The, um, you know, the, the process is not hard, uh, so hopefully this, this kind of information helps, uh, helps you in whatever kind of immigration uh, situation you happen to find yourself in. So hopefully that helps. Uh, go ahead and comment, share, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks.